In the previous video, we used a static password file for authentication against our Minikube cluster. And now we want to replace that with a static token file. And this static token file is in a way very, very similar. The only difference is we're not specifying a password here and then not doing basic authentication, but we're specifying a token here and using token authentication. This is still not flexible in any way. It's still hard coded in this file, but we're getting closer to a, a token based authentication that is maybe issued by another third party token issuer, which we'll see later. So to get started, we need a similar file to what we had before, a user's uh, CSV file, let's call it user's token CSV. And it starts with the token, so some secret token for the user Jane Doe, and she needs the ID, ID Jane Doe 1, and she is in the group awesome users for now. Okay, now that we have our token file defined, we can start up Minikube. And again, here we're using the extra config option for additional configuration. And we want to configure the API server and in there the authentication module and set the token file dot token file to the current directory slash users token dot CSV and start up Minikube. Now let's wait for Minikube to start up. Okay, our Minikube should be up and running now, so let's try to curl the API again, first without any sort of authentication. So that would be HTTPS Minikube IP, and then API V1, and let's again try to get some namespaces, and we shouldn't forget here that we want to trust this self-signed certificate. And that was, of course, the wrong port. We need to specify port 8443 because that's where the API server is actually listening on. Cool, and there we get status 401 unauthenticated. So now if we take a look at our user's token file, we've specified the token, uh, some secret token for Jane Doe. And since we don't have basic auth anymore, but token-based auth, all we have to do now is specify the token, and the token is already tied to this specific user. So if we go back here, and now instead of adding the minus U for basic authentication, we just add a generic header and call that authorization colon bearer. And then in here have our token, which is some secret token and just send that. Then we have a valid API response. And that's how easy token-based authentication is. And that brings us one step closer to having OpenID Connect-based authentication where a third-party token issuer issues that token and handles all the user management for us.